folks. Uh, I am director of music at Corpus Christi Cathedral, for those of you who didn't learn it the last session. I've been there for 32 years, and I have a great uh, uh, program, which I've actually modeled after uh, not the Catholic Church programs, but many of the Baptist Methodist music programs, which are based on age groups. And so I didn't reinvent the wheel. I learned from you all how to actually get children and adults to sing. And uh, so it's, it's, I've had great, great uh, results from it. I have children who started with me in first grade who are adults having children in my first grade choir now. So I'm, I'm seeing their children in my choir. So that's another way of recruiting. I'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, one product uh, behind you is uh, Hank Carrillo back there. Uh, when did you join choir at the cathedral? Uh, is it fifth grade or sixth? Third, third or fourth. Somewhere third or fourth. Oh, that's right. You were in the cherub choir yeah. and you were shepherd, right? One of my shepherds, right. He is now uh, majoring here in Oregon, here at Bayreuth. And so I'm very proud of him. He's, he's excellent. He's a great singer. And he's one of many uh, of my former choir members who are now going on to successful uh, different types of careers, mainly uh, music, which is great. Uh, so today, I am going to use uh, what I've, my techniques that I've done for many, many years, which is the use of toys to teach all to sing. Not only children, but all to sing. Because too many of us as choir directors and choral directors are very wordy, wordy, wordy. We just use words, and then we look at our response from our choirs, it's like <laughs> that. But using the use of toys and images to accomplish the great hallmarks of choral music has been my forte and my specialty. And I learned a lot of it, again, from Helen Kemp. She started it, and I finessed it to mainly uh, build a beautiful tone, uh, correct type of singing for the different age groups of children so that then they can carry it on as adults. Okay. So we're going to be dealing with different age groups of, of sound. Uh, first, second, and third graders are what we would call in their baby voices. They still have their baby speaking voices, I would call it. So it's first, second, and third. It starts disappearing in third grade. Okay. So they have a, a limited range. And so there are two types of registers that all the voices have. What are those registers of the voices, the two types? There's the chest, and, the, chest, chest, and, head. and the head. Okay. They're, what I concentrate on developing is actually their chest voice. Their chest voice. And um, so the first thing I, I, I do with the first, second, and third graders is, first of all, at the very first rehearsal, I teach them about what we call of beholding your instrument, okay? How to hold your instrument. For those of you who weren't here at the last session, I began with everybody how to hold your instrument. With your feet slightly separate, knees slightly bent, shoulders back, gently, and, 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 uh, and I ask them if this is correct, they say no, is this correct? No, this is correct. Is this correct for the neck? No, is this correct for the neck? No, but if you're a tall director, they're gonna look like that. <laughs> All right, so you work on how to hold your instrument. Now, the different positions, this is very important from the very first rehearsal. This is at least what I use successfully is position one, and that's what you're in right now. Position one enables your ears to hear. But look what it does to your mouth. Look what it does to my mouth. See, when I'm sitting in position one, boys and girls, here's my chair, and look what happens when I go back into position one. It closes the instrument, your voice but enables your ears to hear, okay? So that is position one. Then position two, if you, your feet can reach the floor, 90 degree angles, if not, actually dangle, that's fine. So I show them how tall their back needs to be with the magic spring. That's how tall your back needs to be. All right, you all want to sit in position two? Look what happens to your back when the director talks and talks and talks and talks. All right, you start slouching, okay? Then do this, and everybody sees that, okay? Start slouching, gravity will push you down, and up, okay? Hold that position, that is sitting tall. And as I say, we luckily live in Texas, you can use this phrase, sit tall, y'all. Mm -hmm. Sit tall, y'all. Now, look what happens, you saw the image of the toy, I want you all to slouch right now and see what happens when I look at the choir. They fix it. Okay. 
So I look at them at rehearsal or at, or at mass if they're singing at a church service, they're slouching. Boom. And they go, yes. Okay. Also, your neck. Your neck needs to be tall. So make sure they're not like that. Real tall. There's an extra pull so that you're suspended from the ceiling like a marionette. That's really, really tall. So that's this image of the toy will help with the posture. Okay? All right. Now, position three, of course, will be standing up. We don't need to do that now. Position one? Very good. Sometimes I use no um, audio cues. I show you visual cues of different positions. So I start with two, and they go to two, one, they go to one. All right? Now, let me see what happens. Let's pretend that Judy was out of turn speaking. She was talking during rehearsal. So this is how I would correct that, okay? Judy, can you stand up, please? Something seems to be wrong with your chair here. Because for some reason, you weren't in position one, and I heard some sounds coming from you. Let's see how it works. Can you sit down, please? Let's see how it works. Sit back. Oh, it works. OK. <laughs> Very good. So that's called positive reinforcement. And they connect to that. Okay, though there was one girl that said, Raised her hand, she said, can you fix mine too? <laughs> <laughs> so I did that. So that is position one. And I practice position one at rehearsal in uh, five to 10 second incre increments, the first rehearsal. We practice listening for position one. We practice listening to silence. We live in a culture that doesn't know what silence is or experience. So I teach it to them. We practice it. For example, they sing something, they're standing in position three, and I show position one, and they're still talking, 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 and I said, stop, we gotta practice five seconds, position one. So that's your immediate first time you have it, catch them right away, practice it. The next uh, rehearsal, we, if we set first rehearsal is five seconds, the next rehearsal, we'll see if we can do it for 10 seconds. Next is 15, then 30, can we do a minute? That's amazing. So that when you go into position one, it goes right away. Or if they're slow and you still hear song, people talking, going into position one, and said, all right, that took five seconds for us to get into a clean position one. So we practice those. Okay. So I think that's very, very important. The other toy I have in my toy box, because I put this toy box together because Helen didn't want to put it together. Helen said, I said, Helen, people want to know where you get all your toys. Have you thought of having a box? She said, yes, I think it's a great idea to put it together. And I did. And, uh, and it's part of the Singing Fundamentals Toy Handbook. And the board is actually written by Helen Kemp. Helen Kemp wrote the board. She was just grateful somebody put all the toys together. And uh, I take it an extra dimension. I, I use the toys to teach tone, to teach tone and to teach techniques. Here's an example. Uh, my toys have gone through a lot of damage through airport security, and look, they, they knocked out his brain this time. Anyway, this is a tall position two. You notice that? But if the director keeps talking, 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 look what happens to that position. Of course, they're like that, but suddenly you say, position two, there they go, right, like that. Uh, my kids sing at mass, and, and they're, they're holding a good position, but then announcements come. Boom. And another announcer. Boom. The mass is ended. Yay! Good gold piece. So this is a good toy just to just, just to show uh, uh, posture. So they are in position two, and I have them discover the different channels in their voices. So repeat after me. Obviously, that's your whisper channel. I speak like this. I speak like this. That's our speaking channel. I shout like this. I, I shout like, like this. this. Now, I know that the kids, when they first do it, they go, I shout like this. I said, no, you don't. I know you <laughs> shout like this. And so we, we do it again. They really go, I shout like this. And then especially first, second, grade, third grade, they get, I shout like this. You know, like that. <laughs> I said, well, I didn't quite do that. I didn't go, I shout like this. I shout like this. And that's when they discover the K in the back of their mouth, the K. So before I go on to another channel, I want you to put your fingers below your ears, drop your jaw till you feel the impressions, and keep it open. 
tamped down. That is the cave. It's like an umbrella open in the back of the mouth. That should always be engaged whenever they sing. The cave. So even when I say, I speak like this, the cave needs to be open. You'll hear it. They'll go, I speak like this. Then you get them already into that extra tone, even in their speaking voice, no matter what grade they are. Could you even preschool? You'll hear a difference. A great technique is something we do a lot during the day. Yawn. Feel that? That is opening up the cave. All right? Always. So, I speak like this. I speak like this. I shout like this. I, I shout like this. I sing like this. I sing like this. Okay, that, going through that process of the channels, does several things. First of all, they realize that they have different channels in their voices. There's a whisper, there's a speaking, there's a shouting, which requires this. But then for singing, you shift to another channel. This is where we have uh, the issue of the uncertain singer. Okay? The uncertain singer sometimes we call the monotone. But that is mainly because they are locked in what channel? Think about it. They're locked in the speaking channel. And they don't, they don't click. But 99% of the time when you go through the process with that person, who is in what you call monotone and uncertain, it's because they're locked in the speaking channel. Let me give you an example, a story of uh, my bishop, um, a former bishop of mine. He did the whole mass like this. The Lord be with you. And people had to go, and with your spirit. <laughs> Remember uh, who, which bishop I'm talking about, the short one? Roberto. I wasn't around for him. Oh, was it before your time? Oh. Lift up your heart. <laughs> so he was doing everything, you know, uh, everything in his speaking voice. So I decided to go to the sacristy, and I said, you know what, Bishop, did you know that your voice is made up of different channels? And he goes, oh, enlighten me. <laughs> so I said, you know, you have whispering channels, and then there's the speaking channel. So I asked him, repeat after me, whisper. I speak like this, I speak like this. I didn't do the shout, because he already, he already screamed at me already for several things. Then I went, I sing like this, and he went, I sing like this. I said, that's it, that's it. So you need to go into your singing channel when you sing the dialogue today. Well, don't count on me, but I'll do my best, okay? So I'm in the choir loft way up in the back, and he's at the altar, and he's about to do the dialogue. And he looks up there like a deer in headlights. <laughs> And he takes a breath and he goes, The Lord be with you. And the choir went, Hallelujah! <laughs> From that point on, he was able to sing those at the right range. And everyone goes, What happened? Then he was transferred to <laughs> another diocese. But that is the processes you need to go through when you have uncertain types of singers. Okay? All right. So, Let's continue with now, uh, with, with breathing exercises. I teach with a pyramid philosophy. The most important part of the pyramid is the bottom part of the pyramid. And when it comes to the singing voice, the most important foundation is what we just discussed. What is it? Position. Your posture. It is your posture. How do you hold your instrument? So that's the base of the pyramid, okay? Then when we, the next level up is actually, what? Your fuel, which your air, breathing, how to breathe is gonna be very important. This is a very difficult technique to teach children. And I struggled with it as a child. I could never, I don't know what, first of all, they referred to a diaphragm. What is a diaphragm? I don't know what that is. I'm like, you know, they couldn't quite tell me that. When I first taught children, I laid them all flat on the floor with their knees, with their feet up, feel like that, and there was no other way to breathe but through the diaphragm. There was no shoulder breathing. And I had them transferred as they stood up. But I finally found a toy that's in my toy box that helps teach that technique. And that is this one, the Hoberman Spear. 
In order for me to include this in my toy box, I had to com convince the Hoberman company why it needs to be in my toy box, for them to allow it to be in their toy box. Because they use this for other reasons. I, write, I practically wrote a thesis for them about it. And then they approved it. But what I want you to do is pretend, sit tall, position two. Actually, stand up. And pretend that I'm putting this behind your belly button and a little bit below. And as I open up, expand it with air. Now blow. Now breathe through the cave. When I say breathe through the cave, it's like beyond. Like that. Now, do you feel this expanding? Getting bigger? Ready? Try it again. Now, I see a lot of children starting to breathe that way. I, I don't see this anymore. So this worked, it really works. So when I open it up, I did, now I'm holding it actually from here to here because I want it to be, instead of east to west, mm -hmm. I teach always from earth to heaven. Earth to heaven, not California to Florida. California to Florida, because that's their tongue. We're gonna teach that kind of tone. So that's the breathing here. To make sure that they breathe correctly, I have them repeat this exercise after me. Put your hands below here and repeat after me. A little higher. muscles and you feel the movement. Anybody not feel any movement? There are a couple and the reason is they don't breathe down here, they're breathing neck up. So they need to learn how to breathe all the way to their toes. Okay, But again, the Hoberman Spear already fixed that, so I went to that level. Then I can teach this exercise here. And this is my hammer which again was broken at security. <laughs> See, it was right there. No, there you go, it's been taped too. Anyway, so I go like that. This side of the group, and you'd be on this side too, will go. You listen to the hammer rhythm. Keep on going. Ball going, and yours is. Woo, woo. All right, I don't want you to hyperventilate, but you you invent a train with the kids, but also they listen for the beat, and you just taught them a two-part round, two-part. All right, be seated. So those are breathing exercises. Using the toy, I use the toy hammer. Another one is pretending that you have a, uh, a flag in front of you here. And you take a breath with the poker and spear, and then blow for five seconds. Okay. Then we play games. How long? How many seconds you can do that? How much? How much, uh, how many seconds can you sustain a breath? All right. Or you can do this. Blowing is the better, that's the better one. Okay. So that is with the air, the fuel you need. Now, the other thing is, God gave us lips. All right. Now, lips are going to be very important for tone and for diction. Okay. So, I have them practice uh, what I call lip trills, and you just blow air like you blew here, or or you're going to do this. 
Yeah, you gotta, you gotta realize, well, when you're laughing, you're not gonna be able to do it. I'm sorry. All right? Okay. You float. Now, I actually have to have them sing a warm up. So far, me right do. Do, like this. They're going. And you do it your way. Whatever it is. Ready and breathe. That's going to be very important for later on prediction. All right. Now we get into the next part of the pyramid, which is the sound. All right. It's the tonal development. Now, first of all, I want to share with you the different types of children's voices that I have encountered. All right. Now, I want you all to sing um, My Country Chisabi, and I will, uh, I will sing the voice, try to represent the voice that I encounter because I interview every child just to check out their voice. It's a vocal checkup, so I know what kind of voice they have. Okay? So sing, my country, and I'll, I will demonstrate the voice. Ready? And go. My country, tis a big, sweet land. Okay, that's the first type of voice, and that is the, I would call it the uncertain singer. Okay, that's the first one. All right. So then I would go through the channels. Remember the channels? Go through the process and I would fix that. Here's another one. Ready and go. My country is a big sweet land. I call that the air conditioned singer. Okay? <laughs> they're breathing, but they're letting all the air. They're very breathy. Breathy. Okay? Here's another one. My country. Ready and go. My country is a big sweet land. Of that is the what I call organum singer. The person singing the melody but a fourth above or a fifth below. It's so if you, what? Or, well, it's, it, it's organum is chant in uh, Latin when a whole melody is a fourth or a fifth below. All right. So they're singing the melody but it's a fourth above. So if you go, you, they go, you. Or if you go, you, they go, you. They hear everything a fourth above. All right. So I call them the organum singer because of that. I don't know what the baptism are, I call it. I don't know what it is. But they're, they have the right melody pattern, but they are at the wrong uh, uh, level. So what I do is I have them visualize it. I, like, for example, talk boards are a thing of the past, but they still have them here. But I think it's great. So if I go, uh, the child says, I, I sing, you. So they go, here's where I am, you. And they go, you. I said, well, you were here. See if you could bring it down. So I go, you, and they go, you, and so I chart it here. I have them visualize it. Eventually, I do correct it, right, by visualizing where they are, and then we kind of match it up. Sometimes when they hear me as a male, they go way high. They can sing higher because they think because I'm, I'm singing high because I'm a man. But usually with a woman, it really works. Even with a the piano, they hear organ chunks. I said, okay, you went, you, to repeat after me. Then they go, you, because they're hearing it from a voice and not a piano. So if they can't match the piano, you, then I go, you, they go, you, that's what happens. All right, here's another uh, type of voice. My country, ready, and go. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty. Uh, that is the Leanne Rhines wannabe. <laughs> Usually I can tell when the mom and dad come in, mainly the mom, says, you will want my girl in your choir because she sang the national anthem at the Texas Rangers baseball game. And uh, she has a very, they're usually strong chest voice singers. They don't have any development of their head voice. They're like the um, Annie musical type of voice. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's another, no, another type of voice. Here's another one. My and go. My country is a sweet land of That's the shy singer. The shy one. And you will need to know that they, they're very shy. By knowing that they're a shy singer, you will put them near a strong singer. They're matching pitch. They're, they're great to know that you have that. 
All right, here's another one. There's also one I can't do anymore. I used to be able to do it, but I'm now working out. It's called the Helium Singer. Helium? They, yeah. they talk real high. Hi, Mr. Holtz. Real high, real high. Helium. So I call them the Helium Singers. And they usually talk very high, and they sing very, very high in a whistle voice. So that's, that's, that's another characteristic. <laughs> the Helium Singer. All right? Here's another one. Final, uh, no, there's two more. Here's uh, this one. Ready and go. My country is a big sweet land of land. What is that? On pitch. The normal, normal <laughs> singer. You need to know who those your strong singers are. So when you do that vocal interview, say, oh, this person is a strong one, then I'm going to put him or her near the, the shy one. So you, you know that that's going to be your leader. Here's one more. Ready and go. A dream to of the sweet land of What is that? Choking? <laughs> it's actually the change of voice. Uh, voice. I'm sorry, I did a bad demo on that. Oh, there is one more. Ready and go. My country tears of the sweet land. It's called damaged voice. Um, I'm finding that from children who yell a lot at home, and they talk gruffy. Hi, Mr. Gloss, how are you doing? They usually have nodes, or, and I'm finding that a lot lately, of kids that have nodes and uh, damage to their vocal cords. And then I do recommend they go see a doctor. And they, I had one girl who uh, interviewed with me that had that damage, and then she had a fix, and she became a Texas Allstate singer. All right. How many people would have dismissed her immediately because of that? So you need to know and tell the parent that, hey, their voice is damaged. You need to get that checked. All right. Now, I have a video of a change of voice. It happened right during the filming. His voice changed during the filming. And I'm going to have you watch it. I think I might need you to do the lights. Uh, and his name is Ronnie. Look what happens during this actual moment. He's in seventh grade. And when I first saw him, I said, uh oh, something's going to happen during this filming. All right, let's start out with your head voice, Ryan. Turn on ball. Ready? Already. range was right between middle C and an A. It disappears. 
And you, a lot of music that is written for that age group is in that range, so he, they can't sing that range. But he could be a soprano, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now he's going to discover his new voice. It's on camera. <laughs> so your break is about an E flat above middle C. And so he has a break. Let's go to your new voice, crack. your test voice. Shift up to your head voice. Go up to here. Ready, and. going to change as you get older. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lights. So that was caught on camera. I thought it's a priceless video. But you can see what these seventh grade boys go through. I'm also now seeing them change as early as fifth grade now. I don't know why but it's happened. Boys' voices are changing earlier in our society. So, so you can see that they have this whole upper range and this whole lower range. So I call them flip singers. When I do this, I want them to sing soprano, and I do that back to the tenor bass. So they can go, Gaudete, Gaudete, Christus es natus ex Maria Virgine, Gaudete. They can do that. Sometimes the sopranos are singing the descant awful. It's a guy sing the descant for them, and they love that. <laughs> Girls resent it, but. So at least you identify what different types of voices you have within your group. And mainly when I do this, I, after, I start in fourth grade identifying these things. First, second, and third graders are already what I call in their baby voices, and I focus on um, uh, a good chest range. I get, a, have them experience uh, some of the head voice, and some of these exercises and toys that I'm gonna use in this next, uh, in this next part. We are gonna need the lights again, but let me get it started uh, here. This is on my DVD, The, Sink, the, uh, the Child's Voice. And uh, I used my choir to do this demo on how to develop what I call the hoop sound. And here we go. Oh, that's the old, that's the same video. I'm sorry. I'm being close. All right, there's the pyramid. Posture, breath, now we're going to sound. Let's get the lights. After breathing, the next level on our pyramid is sound. Making the sound as a singer. This is Mr. Moose. He helps you get into what we call the head voice. For the head voice register, it's almost like you make it sound like a siren. The chest voice range is basically between uh, music that is between C, middle C, and probably as only high as an F, where most children sing. And if I were to sing My Country Tisity, it would all be My Country Tis of the or My Country Tis of the Sweet Land. Real strong. But we wanted to get them into that higher range. So the siren enables them to get throw their voice without really thinking into that range. As I throw him up in the air, I want you to let your voice go up and then fall down with Mr. Moose. Okay, take a breath. And good. They have a K yeah. on the back row now. Good. All right, I'm getting higher. And One more time. <laughs> All 
First of all, try to catch it. I can't. <laughs> I throw it up in the air, and uh, if a child catches, that's great. And they'll throw it back to me. I make sure that everybody's voice rises all the way up. You also listen to make sure it falls down, too. And you know what else you hear in that? You hear a sigh. Singing is a form of sighing. That hot potato on the back of your mouth, breathe through it. That's another image, hot potato. Good, even higher. So you throw it way up in the air, and the higher you throw it, the higher their voice will go. Even the boys. More spin. It's like the siren. It's getting closer. Closer. You can uh, imitate an ambulance coming from far away. Woo, woo, woo. Get louder as you go closer to the Several of these at the beginning of rehearsal warms up the voice pretty quickly. Alright, lights for a second. Here's Mr. Moose. Here, the real person. I've had him for a long time. He has a tape on his eye. <laughs> it was sad because he, I left him on the top of my car and he fell and I ran over him. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and his eye fell off, so it's taped back on. So we did that. I I use this with first, second, and third graders too. I mean, they could they could do that. That's where you hear that woo woo, and they're able to start doing uh, uh, music in their head voice range. Okay, not only that. Uh, I did a I conducted a festival somewhere and had a ceiling just like this, so everybody went woo like that, and then they went woo. Because he got stuck in the ceiling. His ear got stuck in the ceiling. And they kept on holding, and I stopped them, and I said, I think he's up there uh, at a prayer session in heaven for a while. I could not have them focus. Where were their eyes throughout the rest of the there. So I said, all right, you all are worried about him. And they go, yeah. And then a kid raised his hand and said, Mr. Quotes, Mr. Quotes. He said, you have a ball, right? I said, yeah. All you have to do is throw it up there and then it will fall down. I said, y'all want me to do that? And it was like 600 kids, 600 of them. And so I said, well, as, when I do that, as soon as he comes down, you better do that, you know, just let it fall. So I hit, and I threw it, and finally I hit it, and he came, and then everybody went, ooh! <laughs> he finally came down. The maintenance man came by and he's at the break, and he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something. See those little springs of water up there, those little sprinklers? If you hit that, we would have had the whole system running. So we didn't have a sprinkling right. But uh, I was very close to hitting one of those. <laughs> but anyway, that's a great way. Notice they have that space in the back of the mouth. Listen for that. You don't want them to go. I do have them do that so they can experience no cave. Now, open cave. Woo! Woo! You hear that. The kids hear. They hear that it sounds different, that space. Of the yawn. It just, just makes such a big difference in getting them into what we call the tonal type of sound. Okay, so now we've advanced to the hoot sound. The hoot sound, which is still the K, and I have them put a D in front of it, a five note scale starting on C6, which is C above middle C. I think on this one I just have them go, hoo, hoo, but uh, uh, I put a D in front of it. And you can tell that was many years ago because I don't look like that anymore. All right, let's try it. Yeah, nice round lips. The lips are long. The hoot is a concept I came up with listening to uh, other choir directors that specialize in tonal development. This one I got from uh, the well. Uh, known choir director Paul Salomonovich, who was also my mentor. Boys and girls, that's a nice little hoot in the back of your head. That you Attributed to an owl hooting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Eyes are big, and then there's a space in the back of the mouth, and I know that children can imitate any sound. And so the hoot, getting them into that, naturally puts what I call a hot potato in the back of their mouth, and enables them to go like, like an owl. So that's why I call it the hoot. Put the hoot in the back of your voice. Make sure you listen, because otherwise it could be, they might not open up in the back of the mouth, and as my children can demonstrate, it would be flat, 
Now, can flat you model lips, flat lips. using flat lip and no hot potato in the back of your mouth, starting from the same note? Flat lip. Here we go. Ready? And. Hear a difference? Fix it with a hot potato and pooching those lips. Nice hoot. Ready? And. And you feel that space in the back of the mouth. Make sure they breathe through the surprise and go. So I also use another image. Open an umbrella in the back of your mouth. You still have that space. So the space is important in the back of the mouth to have a successful hoot. So here in Texas, have, have got some lights here. We have the challenge of the flat lip. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Okay, that's kind of the style you want it. It doesn't sound bad. Well, if you want the children to sing correctly, bring out the lips. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Make those lips longer and put a nice space in the back of the mouth. It sounds, you know, it sounds beautiful. You want to sound when you want to give them an experience of what heaven will sound like. What will choir sound like in heaven? Okay. What if St. Peter, when you get to the gate, says, I want to sing, I want you to sing this little light of mine without a flat lip. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but I notice a, a lot here in, in the Texas. They sing uh, like the song, Be not afraid, I go before you always come, follow me, and I will take you. Yeah, so, it's, so the vowels and the, and the tone is not there, making the lips long. So now we are going to advance into the five different vowels. So I got them into that tone, the head voice, with the hoot, and getting them to do, so I do a lot of do shots, do, 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 with the children, no matter what age. So I have them stand up and they sing this way to project to that wall. Then I have them turn to that wall. Then I have them turn to that one. Because they're projecting it. I want them to project it that far. So I'm teaching them projection. And when you have that hoot, the hoot uh, sends it even more. You hear the difference in the room? This room has lots of curtains, but when you're in a space like a big space like the chapel, you're going to hear lots of beautiful ambience. In our cathedral, we have reverberation, right? so you, you hear extra sounds. It's beautiful. And so let's go on now to the next one. And we introduce the first toy that I was ever introduced to by Helen Kemp. So we're getting into the lips. But Mr. Pooch doesn't have to. So we advance to the next level of the pyramid which is the embouchure. And of course, that's a kind of a nice little word for lips, your lips. That's so you have a nice little smile. Now I call that the country western style or the pop style. Now fix it, ready to go. What we try to do is the singers to achieve a nice sound is to learn how to shape the lips. And that's where Mr. Pooch comes in. He is here to help you with the vowels that you form when you sing. Now you notice his mouth is shaped like your smile, naturally, but when you sing the vowels, you're gonna to have to bring in the corners of your mouth like he does right now. So I want you to say the words ma, me, me, mo, mu. Let's all try that. Ma, me, me, mo, mu your hands right on your cheeks here and gently press them and say the words together, the vowels. And be careful not to push like a little fish, that's a little too much. You have to really have uniformity of sound. They also need to sing the same vowels in the same formation. There can't be an ah here and an I here and an A here. It's all got to be together.
girls, there are diphthongs that we always have to sing. Okay, so we're getting into diphthongs. Uh, you can turn on that a second. So the, the shape of the lips, when they make it long, you kind of need to watch it so they don't overdo it. You know? So you have to do this. I don't have to do that. Okay, just gently bring it in. Mo sing after me. Ma, me, me, ma, mo. Ready and go. Ma, me, me, ma, mo. What are the two bright vowels of those? I, I. The e eh and the e. Okay, you're gonna. See, this is what they're gonna do. Ma, me, me, ma, mo. See the these muscles get tight. You want them to get loose. And the only thing that moves for the e eh is inside the mouth. Sing pa. Shitona, it's your tongue. Now make sure you have at least two fingers open. Separate your teeth. Those of you who still have teeth, separate your teeth. Like you're about to bite into an apple. And go. Difference in the sound, and any aged child can do that themselves by doing that. You see, their lips get longer. Okay. Now we do have diphthongs, so I'm setting you up for word formation. So diphthongs are a combination of two vowels. First vowel is an ah, and then the second vowel is an oo. So it's and so the warm up, and, and it's and it's in your handout. You know, I've been following your handout here under total development, right here. Um, we did the five note scale going down, which is the Duke shots, starting on C six. Now vowel formation, ma me mi mo mu. We just did that. Now we're going into round sound bound down town. So we work with the uh, diphthongs. And here's how the kids can demonstrate for you. Both the right way to do it and the challenge. It's really kind of challenge to really mouth the diphthongs. And we use the warm-up round sound found downtown. Let's model that. Round sound found downtown. All right, let's sing that. Mostly an ah vowel. You know, 90% is an ah, and 10% is a ooh. Mm. Round sound found downtown. Now let's model flat lip singing and typical diphthong singing. Starting from here. Okay. are doing it uh, with the uh, teeth barely separated. That's kind of typical. And maybe you could add a little bit more of your Texas twang if you want this time. Now let's add some beauty to it. Fix that round sound. Down, down, down. Ready? Uh, ready? Yeah. Unfortunately, there is this notion that. All right, let's have some lights. Watch, watch your eyes. Oh, too late. Okay. All right. With all that uh, concentration on tonal development, then we need to get into diction, and uh, so that's the next level of the pyramid up. There are some vowels, excuse me, consonants that you can actually sing on a note. For example, all these: the B, the D, the Gs. You can go ba, da, ga, la, ma. Na, ra, va, va, wa, za. The Z is actually, if you sing the word praise, for example, praise, it's a Z. I've been teaching my choir in S. It would go praise, praise the Lord. What's praise the Lord? 
is it actually a Z? I was, I, I was a real. There are unpitched consonances, like a C if it's Christ, uh, an F. An S is separating your teeth. A T, an X, like if you sing the word, Latin word for pox, pox. So those are mostly word endings. So I do word isolations uh, using my catcher mint here. It's been broken too. Oh, good. That works. All right, so we play a game. I isolate some words that I'm going to be teaching during the actual rehearsal. All right. So I have you all seen the word haw oh, when it lands down here? You breathe when I throw it up here. And when it lands here, you sing haw oh, on that note. Haw. Oh. Okay, breathe and sing. Okay, good. All right. Now put a G in front of it. Try it again. And now hold it. And when it, when I throw it back down here like this, it's gonna be a D at the end of it. Ready? Go. Go. Duh. Right, right. Now, let me hear it. It's here. Duh, duh, duh. Sometimes our kids go, God, and adults go, God. What's God? Who's God? It's actually sung on that note. God. Duh, duh, duh. Okay. Now, as it goes up, you can crescendo. Ready? Sing. God. All right. Now, you could use two of these. You could throw it across the room, and then you could do that. Can you, who, who can catch? Who's good at catching? I'll catch. You try? Yeah. Good. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing. Okay. Not, not to worry. All right. All right. All right. So we'll start with God here. Ready and breathe. I'm crescendo as it goes all the way to there. Good. Good. Great. Now let's try a new word. Throw it back to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is good. Sing. Oh. Good. Now put a J in front of it when it gets there. Ready? Good. All right. So it's jaw. All right. Let's put an oi at the end of it. An oi at the end of it. Ready? We'll start with joy, and then you throw it back for the oi at the end of it. Ready? Joy. Joy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Throw it up in the air. Throw it up in the air and you do it to you. Joy. Oi. What's the spell? Joy. Okay. You notice that uh, the Y is an oi. Joy. Oi. Isn't that pretty cool? All right. Uh, here's another one. Uh, ready in. Now when I throw it there, I put a P in front of it. And uh, throwing back. And then uh, we're going to put an S at the end of it. Ready? Sing pa. No, wait a minute. No, uh, an X at the end of it. Ready? Start with pa. 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 <laughs> I did not give you enough room for that. Sorry. That's okay. Singing just... and throwing. <laughs> How about another word? You want to come. Use? What? Come. come. We come. have a lot of words, a lot of songs that have come. 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 Yeah, and it's not. Come. With a with a uh, cave in the back of it. Ready? Start with come. A uh, strong come. All right. I didn't hear. Excuse me. Let me check. Oh, it works. It works. Ready? Try again. Crescendo and put a ma at the end of it. And it's actually ma, right? Ma. Let me check it. Ma. Yeah, it works. Okay. Here's a. There's a ma. Ready? And. Good. Excellent. So you can isolate these words. Thank you very much. Good. And then you could have them crescendo to there or decrescendo. You can do that one. Back. All right. So, where's my script? What I put all here? Because we have five, less than five minutes. So we did word isolations. Now, the next uh, thing I would, uh, wanted to show you is what do I call legato talk, okay? Legato. Now, how many of you are familiar with uh, a Lenten love song of Kelly Kent? Some kids sing it too punchy. 
Now Jesus went into the garden, the garden of Gethsemane. He went there sad and very weary. All right? But instead of that, we want him to do legato talk. So I have them practice, and you can repeat after me. Legato talk. Now Jesus went into the garden. Try that. Now Jesus went into the garden. Now they can sing it like this. Now Jesus went into the garden. Ready? Try that. And let go. Now Jesus went into the garden. Even first and second and third graders can sing legato. But you have to teach them what I call legato talk first. If you're singing the phrase, God who touches earth with beauty. That's Austin Loveless piece. Instead of God who touches earth with beauty, beauty. <laughs> let my. <laughs> All right. So they see it image wise. Now Jesus went in. And it ends with that, Taizai. Ubi caritas et See how it. They see the stretch, the uh -huh. crescendo. So that's how a taste of some of the use of the toys. And I'm going to go further into this in my next session, which, and I'll be showing you some uh, fun uh, warm-ups to incorporate these toys and all these techniques in my next session, which I think is at 10.15? Oh, wait, 10.30? I'm not sure. Uh, it was at 1 o'clock. We worship at 10.30. Oh, we worship at 10.30. Oh, good. I get a break. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay, at one o'clock, we are going to advance into body, mind, spirit, voice. Did you ever experience that with Helen Kemp? Body, mind, spirit, voice. It takes the whole person to sing and rejoice. You'll just have to wait till after lunch. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go into further use of the toys and then some, um, some amazing, fun warm ups that incorporate all these techniques into. So we'll warm up. Okay.